This video is sponsored by Cardo Systems. In the last video, we took our 125cc mini jeep and our 200cc ATV up to our condo in the Rocky Mountains. If you haven't seen the first episode, basically we're going to be testing two Chinese built toys to their limits. And we're going to be taking them to the same place you would bring your $10,000 Polaris and see how long they'll survive. Honestly, I'm a little concerned. Actually, I'm desperately hoping we won't have to be camping out there. Sounds like fun. Before we begin, let me give you a few extra details on what exactly we're driving. One of the vehicles is a go-kart four-wheeler hybrid with a fiberglass jeep mold covering the body. Its powertrain is an 8 horsepower 125cc engine going to a solid rear axle. The other vehicle is an ATV fitted with a GY6 engine that pumps out a whopping 10 horsepower and also uses a solid rear axle. Oh, and did I mention that both vehicles were bought right off of Amazon? Nice. And with that being said, it's now time for my spine to get demolished. So here we are guys, we are finally at the trailhead. And so basically right here, this is our quote base camp and there are two mountains. And I'm gonna explain that in just a minute, but I wanna show you guys a little bit of our setup. So Ryan's gonna be on the ATV and I'm gonna be in the mini Jeep. So before we came here, we took the uh, ATV and the mini Jeep on, let's just call it a test run uh, with our buddies. And we just went over a little mountain road, nothing too crazy, it was all downhill. So during the little outing, we did have a few little mishaps, like the uh, ATV had something fall off and the same thing with the mini Jeep. If you look under the ATV, you see we've got no tail light. And uh, yeah, it just fell off. So nothing too crazy. Uh, on the mini Jeep, something I got to note and remember is that the ECU, the control box completely uh, fell off and the bolts are no longer um, usable so it can't be put back on. So if we were to go through a big puddle, uh, the motor's fried. So that will add to the adventure for sure. So today's video is going to be split into two segments. We've got the easier segment, not the easy segment, the easier segment. And then we've got the harder segment, which is gonna be across the street. And as you should see, it goes up that road. So, the easy segment has rocks, it's got puddles, it's got steep climbs. And then the other one, it's got steeper climbs, more rocks, and deeper puddles. So we're gonna start out with the easier segment, and then we're gonna move on over to the tougher one, which is across the street. Well, I think we're ready. Let's begin. Normally what we would do is put both vehicles up against each other and see who would win certain challenges. But since we don't really know the trail that well, let alone know if either vehicle will even survive, instead we will be seeing how they perform just by progressing our way up the mountain. Coming up shortly, we're about to hit our first water puddles. Well, we got some water puddles, tiny ones. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh man. 
So far, both vehicles have managed to make it through the puddles, but to your surprise, those were only teasers to what's coming up soon. Currently, we're about 200 vertical feet above our original starting point, with the entire mountain making up 650 feet of total elevation change. We still have quite a distance to go. The whole entire mini jeep is like caked in water now. This will be nice. And I've got wet shoes. I was actually thinking I would not get wet shoes, but uh, could have come up through that hole. Could have come up to, through here. Yeah, look at that. All over the place. Ahead of us is a massive hill that makes up for nearly 200 feet of the climb. Let's see how the two vehicles handle it. so far so good until it didn't go so good as the mini jeep began to die ha huh, i've got low gear take that you stupid mountain Now you may be thinking that the ATV should be able to beat out the mini jeep in every obstacle, right? Wrong. Let me get something straight. The mini jeep uses a 3 speed semi-automatic transmission, which means I have more control over the engine. On the other hand, the ATV uses a continuously variable transmission, which is basically a belt drive. On most ATVs, a CVT is fine, but in some cases, it can be a fragile little thing. If you happen to get it wet, or if you overheat it by climbing a hill for too long, it could burn out, and your ATV would be toast. Well, its rubber band would be toasted. Long story short, the ATV might have an extremely severe weak point if we happen to mess up its transmission. We drove on for a while, but there wasn't too much to report. We did see some cows, Hello, cows. and then we found our first large-sized puddle. Oh my goodness. Look at that puddle. Now it's my turn. To be honest, I didn't even think I would make it. So far, the mini jeep has really surprised me with how capable it's showing to be. And don't forget, it's almost completely in stock form. The ATV has done pretty well too. And finally, after 650 feet of climbing, we have reached the top of our mountain. Well, that was not too bad. Uh, we definitely caked the mini jeep with mud and it's completely soaked 
I'm gonna have to check that ECU box, but. Well, there you go, guys. We are at the top of the first phase of our testing. Uh, the mini Jeep is pretty awesome. At high RPMs, the engine uh, sputters less, and at low RPMs, it kind of has trouble running. And I'm pretty sure that's the carburetor. Um, I do have an idea up my sleeve for the future to possibly fix that. Uh, Ryan, tell me how the ATV was. Uh, it goes through puddles really well. This thing is like a rock crawler with these the shocks. Well, it handles great. Um, the steering is really, really good on it. And uh, yeah, pretty it's awesome. Like I'm being interviewed. It seems like the ATV. Um, you know, it does have more power. It's a 177 compared to a 125, so clearly there's more power there, but the big tires help it over rocks faster, but the Mini Jeep is actually pretty good. Now, the next phase is going to be much tougher, and you guys are going to see that in a minute. All right, so now it's time for the fun part. Ryan, you ready? So the whole time my brother and I have been out here riding, we've been using this super cool device for communication. It's called the Pack Talk Outdoor by Carter Systems. Pack Talk Outdoor is the ultimate sports communicator. It operates using Bluetooth, which allows it to function without the need for Wi-Fi or cellular connections. This way, you and your buddies can stay connected no matter where the adventure brings you. Let's take a look. Inside the box, you'll find your Pack Talk unit and blow that or some instruction booklets. And at the bottom of the box, you'll see your charger, some accessories, and your premium JBL audio speakers. The clip-on attachments have an adhesive sticker to grab onto your helmet, making installation a breeze. Operation is super easy. Just hold down to turn on the unit and it'll automatically pair using Bluetooth. When you're ready to talk, there's no need to push buttons as the device is voice activated. By using these devices, my brother and I have been able to communicate so we always know if and when there's an obstacle. And for your peace of mind, you get a free two-year warranty that comes with each unit you buy. For 20 years, Cardo Systems has proudly served motorcyclists, skiers, mountain bikers, rock climbers, and many others. Go down to the description below to get yours today. After spending some time at the top of the mountain, we began the ride back down. We went back through the giant water puddle and then met up with the cows again. <laughs> After going through the puddle for the second time, I think it was safe to say that some water got into the air filter, because now the mini jeep started to sputter and kept wanting to die. Once again, we'll just forget about it like we did with the squeaky shocks. It'll be fine, right? Although we were surrounded by vast, rolling hills, there were actually gigantic 14ers all around us. It was hard to see them from where we were, but I promise they were there. Along the way back, we saw a couple people wave at us. This one guy in particular even cheered us on. Thank you! And just like that, we made it back to the bottom, surprisingly in one piece. And we have our auto turn off technology. It's called a carburetor that's unhappy with the altitude. Turns off automatically for you. So here we are back at the bottom. Uh, it really was not too, too bad. Uh, there were some pretty good hills and climbs and some fun little puddles that you guys saw. So the Mini Jeep does need probably some good suspension upgrades um, because those shock absorbers are really not liking the rocks and stuff that we're dealing with here. The ATV, on the other hand, the ATV has these reservoir shocks in the front. So these shock absorbers, they run nitrous oxide and you can tune it to the type of riding you're doing and they just make the overall ride quality feel way better. It's getting a little bright here in the sun and the angles, but we are now at the camp again, and we're refilling on gas and getting snacks and checking out our video footage. So now we're gonna go up to the higher trail. And like I said before, this trail has more rocks, deeper puddles, and bigger hills, and it's definitely gonna be quite the challenge for the little mini Jeep. So that's gonna be the final challenge. So let's get to it. 
Now that we were back at the safety of the trailhead, we can now head off the other way to do the exact same thing, but this time with some possible serious consequences. But for you guys, that'll have to wait until the next episode.